Hello ladies and gentlemen, this is Blue Maxima and I'm here checking out, move the stick to make it bright again, Neurovoider. Neurovoider is a twin stick roguelite, and they do specifically call it roguelite, which I'm a fan of, shooter. It's also four player co-op, which I haven't actually had the opportunity to test, but I imagine it wouldn't be that much different from the one player game, only you've got a couple of people helping you out, so... We're just going to go and have a quick look around first. You can turn the music and the sound effects up and down. Odd that the music starts at halfway, but the sound effects starts at max. But that balance is absolutely fine anyway, so it doesn't really matter. Screen shakes, replay the tutorial, display the runtime in the language. That's all pretty good stuff. You do have daily runs, but I don't really feel the need to go over what those are. It's pretty much the same as the regular game. Uh, you can resume your game, because this game does actually take a while to get through. I've been playing for about two hours, and two of those games went for about 45 minutes each, and I didn't finish the game on either of them. So, the game is almost annoyingly long, we'll get into that. You can see all my kills that I've got here, the amount of time I've been playing for, which is almost exactly two hours, which is nice. And your stats for the three different modes, Arcade, Rogue, and Voida, they're all basically difficulty levels, easy, medium, and hard. I've been playing on medium because that's what they recommended in the new game menu, as you can see here. For Roguelite fans, the base Neuro Voida experience, I reckon that was the thing that I was going for. And you can see 70%, that's how far I got. I actually got up to the third boss, and there's four bosses. So, there is a... At least, it gives you a little bit of incentive to keep going through and getting your percentage up over and over again as you go through. But anyway, we'll just hit the button and start a new game, shall we? Uh, you can put up to four people in here. And you can also do custom seeds, which is nice. So if you get a good seed, like CLE 0.69, I think that's the seed. I'm not entirely sure. But yeah, you can put in your custom seed in order to play the same game again, which is a nice little feature for people who want to do like solo runs with their mates or something. So you've got a choice between your three different classes here. The three different classes mainly have... Every class can use every gun. The only thing that really changes is the parts that you can carry and take along with you. And your special ability. Everything else is customizable. I prefer using the fortress because its shield's actually quite useful when I remember to use it. But the rampage is also alright if you want the extra firepower. And dash is okay if you're good with that sort of thing. But... The thing is, starting with the cutter, the melee weapons in this game are next to useless just because you're almost guaranteed to take damage while you're trying to deal damage to someone else. So I'm just going to use the fortress. You also get a choice of 27 unique skills from the beginning, which is a little odd because that, that is an absolute ton of passive and active skills to give a player just right there and then. I, I'm not entirely sure what the deal is. And you can choose between passive and active ones. And I, here I was thinking that you would get the ability to like get a couple more of these as you go along but no you just pick one here and that's what you get for the entirety of the game which is a nice little thing but at the same time it's just weird that you put so much effort into all of this and then you just end up screwing with it but anyway i'm gonna random until i get a decent active one uh revise the closest ally i'm blank yeah go postal that'll do you've got a ton you can slow down time you can repair yourself you can um, survive death once, and then there's of course the passives, like you get more money for getting rid of loot and stuff like that. So you get to choose what level you go to, and you can also reboot the RNG, which is an interesting thing, where you can do it to actually get more stuff. And oh my god, that's a hell of a level right there. But anyway, let's go on to the lab, because why the hell not? Considering that there's... <laughs> Size 6 and loot 6. That's kind of ridiculous, but yeah. You can see just what you're going to end up doing in the level. The levels are all very basic in their concept. All you need to do is find the reactors and destroy all of them. The levels are pretty big sometimes. They're also pretty small sometimes, depending on the size of the thing, obviously. But that is pretty much the goal of every level you come across. There are some special levels that you can get. You can get one of them every in between like boss fights. So you can get one special level every five levels. But those levels are actually really fucking hard. Like, I don't know why they're so difficult, but they just are for some reason. You end up getting absolutely flawed no matter how well you're doing. So you just end up in this weird position where... Like, it's, it's weird. I'll get to one. If I see one and I feel the suicidal desire to jump in and show you what that looks like 
I will, but I I think I like to think I do a little bit better in these sorts of games now that I've been playing them and talking over the top of them for something like five years. So hopefully that I've gotten slightly better. But anyway, this is Neurovoider. It is a twin stick roguelike shooter, as I said. So you can move and aim with the left and right stick. That much is obvious. You fire with the ZL and ZR buttons. I'm currently on the Pro Controller. Works alright on the Joy-Cons. There's a little bit of auto aim mainly visible when you use something like the Fat Beam, which is actually a weapon in this game. I love the name Fat Beam. It, it, it exemplifies the name perfectly while also pointing out that it is a gigantic Fat Beam. So yes, I did just say it makes it, makes it out that it's a Fat Beam twice over, but it needs it because it's really fat. So... You do have your two weapons on your ZL and your ZR buttons, and they will drain your EP. Your special ability, which is also on your R button, which in my case is the shield there, will also drain EP. Your EP is up in the top left there along with your HP, and I hope I don't need to explain to you what HP is in this game. If your EP drains completely, your mech will overheat, and you won't be able to fire until your EP fills again, so managing your firepower is usually a good idea. You've also got the special ability that you picked up at the beginning of the game on the L button there. So if I were to press the L button now, it would make all my weapons fire a bit faster and take less energy so I could just wipe the floor with dudes. But I don't need to use that just yet, which is nice. The There are some other controls as well. Uh, if you, have the, you press the X button once you are done with the level to teleport out of it, or hold it, I should say. And you can also hold the A button to bring up the map, which lets you see where you've been. If you've got one of the special passive skills, it also lets you see the locations of the reactors. So you don't need to worry about walking around and finding them, which will be nice if you are planning on going for like a speed run, just as an example. Oh, wow, I actually got a glitched weapon. That's the first time I've gotten that. I don't think you can get um, regular glitched anything else, just weapons, but we'll get into how the loot in this game works once I've gone around to uh, actually getting to the end of the level. There's loot boxes around the place, there's um, things you can blow up, these little things here, they're bombs, so if you walk into them, well, if you destroy them, I should say, they will hurt you, but they'll also hurt enemies, so, you know, use that to your advantage if you feel like it. I usually don't, because I never really see them in the background, they don't stand out as much as I would like. You can see them if you're paying attention, but this is me we're talking about, I don't pay attention. So, if you're just going around and trying to hit the damn enemies, you might end up just, like, standing right next to one when the enemies decide it's about time to fire away, and that would be a very bad idea indeed. The levels are actually quite long, if you couldn't tell. Thankfully, in most levels, the enemies don't respawn. I know they do in one or two of the special levels, but... I'll talk about the special levels when it's more relevant. I'm sure I'll see one eventually. Oop. There's my... Oh my god. Okay. Whoop. No. Nope. There we go. I got him. I got him. We're good. I'm almost dead, but I'm good. I don't, I don't exactly know why my nemesis was there. He died like three quarters of the way into the game. Why in the bloody hell was he there? But, alright. Whatever. Gotta go straight up. Make there for everything to go away. I'm actually not doing too well this game. I gotta say, there's my um, there's my special ability there for you, which just makes me fire everything really fast, which is very good, but also very easy to tap at. You can use like both weapons at the same time. You just don't want to because it makes your EP run out faster than anything. So, you know, stick to one. Have another one as a backup if you really need it. But anyway, level done. Let's get out of here. So here we are in the... Uh, I'm gonna just spend the money to repair now. Here we are in the post-level screen. Now, the post-level screen is actually kind of hard to navigate. I understand that you'll need room for like four people to get around, but this whole menu system using all the different buttons, is just, it's just a kind of weird, and I've ended up making a mistake or two here or there. But thankfully, you have to hold the Y button to make sure you're ready, but we're not gonna hold that just yet. If we go to the equip menu, we can actually come and see our loot. So our loot is very good because we can look through our loot and we can see that there are all sorts of different kinds of pieces of shit that we have. So due to the way this game's skill system, um, not skill system works, the uh, special ability system works. You know how I've got that shield? 
Well, that's exclusive to my class. And as you can see, all of this loot is specific to specific classes. So I can't equip anything that's not in my class, so I might as well scrap it all. There is an ability that lets you pick up nothing but loot for your class. It's a very useful, a bit, um, a very useful ability if you want it. You, so you come here and you equip these new items depending on what you feel like, and you can choose whether or not to scrap or keep the rest. I prefer to scrap everything because. Since the Fortress is my favorite class, I don't really feel the need to swap classes halfway through. And if you want to swap classes, you need Vision Core and Transport. You need all of those pieces, which is kind of annoying. Yeah, great. I've got a Gold Core here, but I can't actually use it because it's of a different class. I could have actually swapped to that, um, to that other class, but I don't really want to do that. So it really is just a process of coming through here and finding all the items that work with your class and then just scrapping the rest. And scrapping will give you more money. And, of course, what does money do? Well, it does a few things in this game, actually. You can you can use it to upgrade individual parts. So, we'll just say, for example, I want to boost this. If I use 366 scraps, it'll give me plus 9 health. Which is decent, but not something I want to go spending my scrap on. Because, trust me, in this game, you swap out loot a lot faster than you might think. You'll end up with different pieces up to... Um, after level 5. And with guns, it's the same deal. They all have their own stats and all that. You just need to... You just need to figure out which ones you want. And thankfully, these actually... Thankfully, these weapons... No matter what weapon you have... Oh my. Uh, no matter what weapon you have, it can go on you. You don't have to worry about something along the lines of... Uh, class restriction. Although, some weapons and some classes might not work out so well. I mean... Since you've got the dash with the lighter weight class, that does mean that you end up in a situation where you can use melee weapons somewhat decently. If I die in this game, I'll go and I'll show you the other class. But anyway, you can actually um, hold the ZR button here to see what the weapon looks like. And some weapons are actually kind of useless. Like um, this missile barrage here. Might be good as like an emergency, but you also have better weapons for emergencies. Like for example, the mini nukes, which literally just do splash damage to everything in the area, which is nice. And that is a really good beam. But yeah, this weapon's actually been boosted to the maximum that it's got. So that is actually kind of useful. Here's a flamethrower for you, but it's not a very good one. Here is a... I don't even know what the hell that is. I get a uh, triple disc machine, apparently. And this is a... A big blobber, apparently. Whatever. But I have a mini nuke and a... The final melter on, so I am more than happy with that. You can also use your scrap to craft items, and you can cr every uh, item that you craft in this is going to be for your class. And you can also choose to craft a specific item. So, say I want like a vision item. It's given me a sensor of confession, which is probably yep. It's nowhere near the one I've got, which is unfortunate, but. We've got everything we can really get. I mean, I could spend more scrap, get more items, and go about all of that silly stuff, but I don't really need to. I can just move on to the next level, and we'll go to the sub, because it's nice and small, and it has tons of loot and tons of elites, and elites are more likely to give you better loot. Very simple stuff. Nothing particularly out of the ordinary. You can, now that I'm using the beam, you can see how just obvious the analog stick aim is. Um, aim correction, I should say, is aim assist. You can see that I'm just, like, aiming in one spot, and then it'll just slightly change the angle, but it'll do it in, it'll do it in a really obvious way. But, to be fair, this is a laser that strikes the ground below enemies, instead of, like, striking at them directly. So, it's probably a good thing that it does that. So, I've got no problems with it, really. So, the actual gameplay itself is actually fairly satisfying when you first start playing it. The game does look fairly pretty. The art is well done. The weapons and weapon effects are great, especially the sound. Like, the sound design in this game in general is pretty good. I mean, I could be saying that because the music is fucking fantastic. It's done by a composer named Dan Ter Terminus. And I am actually familiar with Dan Terminus because I can't stop listening to his album The Wrath of Code sometimes. So, he is actually quite a goddamn genius when it comes to sort of electronic music. But... His music actually fits the theme here perfectly. Fuck these little rover dudes. 
Oh shit, just thank you, die. Die painfully. Yes. But yeah, the audio also sounds good. Some of the weapons don't sound so great, but some of them do sound absolutely fantastic. So it's actually really good. And the screen shaking is appropriate. I haven't really run into too many problems with feeling ill from looking at the screen too much while it's shaking because I tend to be somewhat sensitive to that under the really under some really, really bad conditions, but this game does it just fine. And again, you've got the option to turn it off, so if you don't like it, get rid of it. And don't worry about it. I don't really like biofalls that much. They they fire at the ground the same way as the um the beam does, but they also don't do much damage and they rely on um uh poison damage, which is rather unfortunate. I'll just get Plasma Bomb? Yeah, Plasma Bomb. I don't like the Plasma Bombs. Nukes are more effective, so there's no reason not to keep a good nuke around. And what's the heat wave look like? Oh, it's just that. Leave that then. Alright. I've got a ton of money, but I don't want to spend too long running around in these menus, because this game has an... Oh my. Well, I can go to the Metaverse now. You know what? I'm, I am actually going to do that, just because I do want, to see, want you to see what this level looks like. Because... Here's the thing with these motherfucking levels. These levels are extremely hard at the best of times. You have, like, the ones I've always come across are fucking swarm levels. And swarm levels are horrendously frustrating because there is just an absolute ton of dudes that just come out of nowhere and they infinitely respawn and you have to make the effort to keep pushing forward. And... This level is actually a fair bit easier. I haven't actually seen this one yet, despite the fact that I've seen like seven of these levels and like five of them were swarms, which is the most frustrating thing imaginable. But yeah, you get these special levels here and they are really, really damn difficult if you don't know what you're doing. And frankly, I'm, ama I'm amazed that I've actually survived this long. You never survive this long in a, in a bloody metaverse level in my experience. Seriously, the only, well, no, that's, that's a lie. I've played like five or six games, and the only game that I lost not to a Metaverse level was to the third boss. So, it is, yeah, it is a very hard set of levels to play indeed. So, that's actually the reactor right there. So, I can just leave this level right now, but since I'm actually doing alright, I'm going to take the opportunity to teleport out immediately, because this is a video. I can't, I can't go and wander around and do random shit, but anyway... Let's see the new shit that I got. This is basically the entire loop of the game. I'm kind of amazed that I lasted that long, and that is nowhere near as good as what I've got. Unfortunate. Get rid of all the other classes items, and get rid of everything else. Uh... Oh, it's a mover, not a propeller. God damn it. But yeah, that's bas this is basically the entirety of the loop of the game. You just go through levels... End on end, no real difference outside of, like, the Metaverse levels. No real breaks in the formula. And it does start to get relatively monotonous. It really does. It it gets surprisingly boring after a small amount of time. Which is really kind of unfortunate. Just because the game itself just goes on, like, for a really really long time. Like, as I said, I was playing this for about 45 minutes for every game, and I was barely, like, when... It took me about an hour to get to the third boss and die to it. So, it's a really, really long game for the actual shooting, because the shooting is satisfying at first, don't get me wrong. It's enjoyable, but there doesn't really seem to be much else in the game itself. There doesn't seem to be much in the way of, like, side content or, like, secrets or special levels that aren't the metaverse to play around with. Just something to keep the game more interesting than it currently is. Which I find really disappointing because I could see this concept working really well with a bunch of other ideas. And they've got the base gameplay down. And the environments are nice. And the fact that they introduce different kinds of enemies that you have to fight off is all well and good. It's just rather... It, it, it just... It grates. It doesn't really do that much to give itself variety. I mean, once you've played through this game and seen the few different kinds of visual styles to the levels that there are, you've basically seen everything. Like, I ended up fighting the same boss twice in one run. At least I think I did. It was a little bit weird that the two bosses were so similar if they weren't the same bloody boss, if you get my drift. And then the third boss was also 
quite similar, but just in a different location. So you end up it just playing what feels like the same levels with the same weapons over and over again, because some weapons are just not worth taking no matter the situation. You end up with a you end up in a position where there's just you just end up having a bunch of crap weapons and you have to stick with what you've got. Hopefully you'll get something better as time goes on, but it just doesn't happen. And you just end up in a really bad place where you've got absolutely nothing to work with. But anyway. Let's see what I got in the loot, shall we? I didn't really seem to have gone much. I mean, this one is just outright better because it gives me like double the health my other one does. But all these weapons here are just white, so there's no real point in keeping them around. That's racist. Uh, let's go and just, um, I'm just gonna hit Forge a few hundred times, just because seriously, why? I need, I need pedal, um, basically better anything, so... It'd be nice if I could just, like, spin for five or ten of this at once, but... If you're playing in the harder difficulties, it would mean just, um... It would mean that you end up with a lot less money, so that might seem like a little bit of a... Might seem like a little bit of a kick in the face. Alright, what have we got here? Um... Slightly better, I'll take it. But anyway, the... the Oh, I really shouldn't have been selling that now that I think about it. Yeah, that one is just outright better despite being lower rarity. Uh, 51 plus 11, yes, please. Uh, and my guns? No, I still have just, like... Oh, that's 390 damage. Hmm, it's a big shotgun and it does have a fair bit of damage on it. Uh, you know what, screw it. I'll take the shotgun just for the purpose of demonstration and... I was about to say, what does the Battle Hellfire do? Uh, that might be helpful. Now, actually, I want to hold on to this nuke, because if, if it's the boss I'm thinking of, this might be a little bit of an issue. Also, I might want to, like, boost some stuff. So, let's boost. Let's boost everything, like, twice. It, it'll probably do the trick. And boost the nuke as much as I can, which is, like, four times, but all right. So, yeah, there we go. Boosted everything. Let's go fight the boss. And whether or not I actually beat this, I will go and I will play the other one of the other classes just to demonstrate because we're already 20 minutes in. And that's kind of, kind of annoying. But anyway, here's what the bosses are like. you got one big dude and potentially two other dudes somewhere nearby to fight off. And you just got to wear down the shield. You just got to wear down the shield and then just wipe the floor with the, um with the actual boss itself. Which I almost just did, which is kind of nice, I guess. But yeah, now the weak spots move down here. These guys fire rail guns, which is actually really annoying. But oh well. Basically, consider it, like the bosses are all just the thing about difficulty in this game is that it seems that their way of doing difficulty is just to spam dudes. Like, I played one level of the higher difficulty, and it was ridiculous just because there was an absolute flippin' ton of... There was an absolute flippin' ton of dudes. Like, massive. Three times what I was usually used to. And that was... No, I, I, well, I might as well show up Voida. Why the hell not, right? Uh, so you, you saw a little bit of my shield, but not much, I admit, because I keep forgetting to use it. So we'll do this guy now, so you can see what a melee weapon looks like. I'll just grand him a couple of times. Uh, EMP, why the hell not? And we will play that one, I guess. But yeah, the game, the way the game seems to handle difficulty is a little bit odd, just because it just seems to want to throw tons of enemies at you. You take more damage and stuff, don't get me wrong, they are, they do appear to be slightly more intelligent. That was a little bit of sword swinging, by the way, but yeah, as you can see, I'm already down to 11 health, which really isn't that pleasant considering there's a guy right there, and there's these dudes, and I need to dash out of the way, and I just keep running into trouble, and I'm almost dead. And I'm barely out of, like, the first set of rooms. This is really bad. But yeah, they have this tendency to just throw shit at you constantly. And that seems to be the way that they ensure 
um, difficulty. And this happens with the bosses too. There is just an absolute ton of fire going around as you play the bosses because they just have tons of different guns, enemies spawn, and they just swarm you. And that the only way to realistically beat the bosses, uh, I think anyway, is to tank them. That, that really just does seem to be the best way to do it. Tank them, fire everything you can at the actual boss, maybe keep a nuke around, because if you keep a nuke around, it is really good to just like stay as close as you can to the enemy boss, fire the nuke at the boss while you're right next to it, because it doesn't you don't take friendly fire damage in this game. And when you do take um and when you do fire it, anyone who's tried to get close to you will die. So that is actually that seems to be like the best way to handle bosses in this game. And I've played like against six of them. Wow. Okay, yeah, as you can see, that was a I'll hit quick restart. Actually, no, I shouldn't have done that, because that means I'll still be on the same difficulty. But as you can see, it is much harder. Oh, well, I'll do Rampage and Random and make a spin explosion upon your death. That sounds exactly what I want. Like what I want. So, I'm not going to get good loot no matter what I do. So, I might as well just pick one of these. It doesn't really matter which one. Your nemesis... Oh, wow. oh shit. Oh, that'll be fun, won't it? Neuro Voider isn't that bad. Not really. Not not in the grand scheme of things. I, I I find the shooting to be satisfying. The it looks good. It sounds fantastic. I absolutely love the music because it's Tan Dan Terminus music. I feel like I say that wrong every single time, even though I really don't. It, it's all well presented, and the actual like guns and weapons and stuff, and the whole the whole class that we got going on. All of it. Um, all of that basic stuff is good. My main problem with the game is its variety and length. It feels too long and it doesn't have enough variety to make up for the length in that. And I'm worried that anyone who tries to play this game seriously will just get bored to tears by it after a certain period of time. That's kind of my issue with it anyway. Just because of how similar the game just remains over its entire playtime. And I find that to be a little bit disappointing because they've clearly got something good going here. And if they were to add any kind of variety to this game whatsoever, it would probably work in the game's benefit. Well, maybe not any kind of variety. Like, I wouldn't want to start playing bloody Tetris. But you get the general idea. Like, just some extra stuff on top just to help the game be a little bit more... Just to help the game be a little bit more interesting would work in this game's favor so much, but it doesn't seem to have that. Maybe if they just like add some uh, some extra stuff as part of the wow, I didn't get any good weapons whatsoever. That's kind of what happens when you end up in a. That's kind of what happens when you end up in a situation like this. But yeah, I think I'll just go straight on to the next level. No point waiting around. Now that's what I'm talking about. Level 5 loot. Probably not going to get too much of it because there's level 2 size and not many elites. But then again, this is the part of difficulty. I do kind of want to... I do kind of want to make that a thing. So... But yeah, if they add any sort of variety to this whatsoever, it would probably be a fantastic time. However, I find it slightly hard to recommend just because of the general repetitiveness of it all. It's a good game. It's just, I, 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 I find myself getting bored of it, and if I was to play any more of it, like, I don't know, maybe like an hour of it, I'd probably put it down and never pick it up again, just because of how repetitive the gameplay is, and I feel like I've seen everything. I don't really feel any sort of encouragement to get to the end of the game and actually fight the final boss, just because they all seem to be fairly similar bosses. Maybe if they were to add, like, more classes, maybe some more passive skills you could unlock on, along the way, more secrets... Just some other stuff like that to make it just that tiny bit more interesting. I'd be way more into it than I am right now. Although it did give me a reason to just like listen to two hours of Terminus. I'm um, Dan Terminus, so I'm I'm pretty happy with that, all things considered. Oh hey, I actually got another glitch weapon, and that was the end of the level. All right, I'll keep going until I die. No point in um, no point in just arbitrarily stopping, I guess. Uh, well, I definitely want to get that. I, I definitely want to get that um weapon there. I, I'll hold on to the disc gun. Oh, hey, big shotgun! Awesome. 
Oh, hold on to that big shotgun for my regular weapon. The Eternal Annihilator. Oh my gosh. Look at that. That is a hell of a weapon. Alright, let's just get rid of everything else. Uh... How much is this bloody game? You know what? Can I check that without closing the actual game up? I, for the life of me, I, I, rem I had the game's price in my head before, but I've just gone completely forgotten. It should be up in North America by now. Oh, let me guess. It won't even let me see the price because I own it because review code. <laughs> oh, damn it. <laughs> That's frustrating. Uh, mainly Ultimate Core of Doom, but I can't actually swap to it. Shit. That, that is really shit. Anyway, uh, just new level. Let's not waste any time. Oh, I can go to the Metaverse again. Fuck it. Let's do it. Anyway, let's do this. The area will self-destruct in three minutes. I need to GTFO, more or less. Yeah, fuck you. Oh, screw, screw everything about this... About these kinds of levels. Like, look at the amount of dudes they put on screen. All credit to the game, though. Doesn't skip a beat. I haven't noticed any sort of performance problems or anything like that as we... As, as we've been playing. As I've been playing. It's It's got a pretty damn good engine behind it, i got to say. But yeah, there we go. I'm dead. And I didn't even see a glorious explosion. Might have been in the audio, but I don't actually have... Oh, there's the seed. The... <laughs> I'm an idiot. I really am. But yeah, that is what the Metaverse levels usually look like. And considering that stuff tends to respawn in them, I don't like just standing around. So whatever. But yeah, that was a quick look at Neurovoider. I would probably tell you to wait for it to go on sale, but at the same time, don't wait for it to go too much on sale. Let it drop a few bucks. I don't even know how much it is. Note to self, put that in the video. Okay, done. This has been Blue Maxima, and I will see you all next time.